continue tonight. We're gonna, we've been talking about angels, and boy, I tell you what, I understand now why the Lord is telling us this, because we have to dispatch our angels, hallelujah, amen. And so we are constantly on a war, a walk. Let's put it this way. Uh, you're not exempt from the attacks of the enemy. You're not exempt from it. And so he's telling you, put your angels to work. Put your angels to work. How many, how many people have been doing that actively? Have been doing that by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to do what you heard. You have to action it. In Revelation, the fifth chapter, in the Good News Bible, it says, again, I looked. So I, mean, I looked. John's speaking to us. The revelator, the great revelator says, again, I looked and I heard angels, thousands and millions of them. Thousands and millions of them. They stood around the throne, the four living creatures and the elders. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you look at this, it's actually declaring there's about 100 trillion angels. 100 trillion angels. The Bible calls them the, the innumerable company. Uh, they're angels and they're innumerable, right? And so we've been talking about how precious Jesus has made a way for the angels to minister to us. So we're going to look, look with me to, in, in the book of Hebrew, and we've been looking in the book of Hebrew, um, and uh, in there it talks about the angels. But, of course, it, you'll see in the Old Testament and the New Testament, you'll see them. All over, hallelujah, amen. In Hebrews, the first chapter, verses 14, in fact, of the first chapter and the second chapter, shares with us about the angels. Hallelujah, amen. The Bible says in Hebrews, the 14th verse, chapter 1, everybody there? Um, let me read it to you, and then we're going to see it in the Amplified. The Bible says in verses 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Question mark. Question is, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? And the answer is what? Yes. Yes. yes they're, they're here to minister. L listen to what it says in the Amplified. The Bible says this. Are not all the angels, in this, if you want to look up here in the Amplified, are not all angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, accompany, protect those who will inherit salvation. The Bible, and then it says, of course they are. Say with me, of course they are. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that's you and me. We are the ones that inherit salvation. We're the ones that Jesus sent angels for. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in the fourth chapter, go with me to Matthew now. Matthew. In fact, hold your, hold your finger there and we're going to come back. But go with me to Matthew or put a marker on there. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the Bible is just so full of, of activity of the angels. Hallelujah. I mean, we're, we're going to talk about angels. We're going to talk about even the dark angels. But listen, we're going to talk about God's angels right now, our angels. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in, in the fourth chapter, uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 11. And uh, put your beautiful eyes on there. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and this is Jesus, uh, in the fourth chapter, verses 11, hallelujah. Well, that's not it, is it? Matthew, the fourth chapter. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at the fifth chapter. That is, that is it. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm using a new Bible here. Jesus here is, is, is in the wilderness being tempted by the enemy, Satan. And he, and he says something in verses 14. He's, this is when it was all over with. The Bible says in verses 14, hallelujah, no, excuse me, verses 11. <laughs> Are y'all awake? Help me out, hallelujah, amen. The Bible says, then the devil left him, left Jesus. The devil left Jesus, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. If Jesus was ministered by angels, Come on. And he's an example to us in everything of the gospel. Then we have angels that will minister to us also. In the Amplified, in, in fact, it says here in the Amplified, the devil left him and angels came and ministered to him, bringing him food 
and serving him. Bringing him food and serving him. So this is quite interesting. Where angels also not only came to uh, sustain him in his time of, of, of trouble, but he, they came to give him nutrition, right? Now, I don't know about you, but this is awesome when you have angels coming and bringing you something to eat. Hallelujah, amen. And so we know that these heavenly beings are sent by God to assist and to assign believers. They're to assist you. Uh, they are waiting for us to give them assignments. Not only once in a while, but throughout the day. Give them assignments. I was at a traffic jam, and I've learned this from Pastor Christine. I, I was trying to cross a major thoroughway, and cars are everywhere. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm putting to work what I've learned. Angels, just hold the cars back both ways. And it wasn't, it wasn't until I finished praying that all of a sudden there became a big gap over here. And then over here, a big gap. And I just crossed over like nothing. And I said, yeah. And I said, yeah, hallelujah. How many times have we tried to cross and cross, and we get all frustrated and stressed out, and, and we end up saying, oh, we'll never get across this. Oh, there's so much traffic. I don't know why I live over here. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Angels are waiting for you to say something. Amen. They're probably saying, duh. <laughs> In Psalms 103, verse 20. The Bible says, and, and we're going to see it in the message, but let me read it to you from the, from the King James. The Bible says in verse 20, Bless, you, bless the Lord, you, ain't, you his angels, who excel in strength. Who excel in strength and who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Now, get a hold of this. They're strong, excel in strength, but they're waiting for you to give them audience of the word. Remember we talked about Jesus said, if you'll, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before angels. He, 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 angels are wanting to be an audience for you. And the way they become an audience is when you confess Jesus, when you speak the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and the Bible says here, so uh, verse uh, 20 in the Message Bible, it says, so bless God, you angels, ready and able to fly. Come on, church. Are you seeing this up here? The Message Bible. So God bless so bless God, you angels, ready and able to fly at his bidding. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, these angels fly at his bidding, quick to hear and do what he says. Now notice this. These are spiritual beings that were, that were created uh, by God for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank God for the angels that are able to fly. They, they see above and around and everywhere. Which way? Hallelujah. Amen. They're, they're good. They're good for you. Hallelujah. Amen. But they hearken to the voice of God. We give voice to them, as Charles Capp said the other day. We give angels the word of God. We give them the voice. Hallelujah. So we have to give them assignments. Say, I'm giving them assignments. Ladies and gentlemen, give them assignments even when you leave today. Give them assignments. Give them, give them assignment that you can't do. Give them something that is so big that you can't do. Send them in and tell them to bring, bring me this right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Make them an audience. Worship Jesus and say, Father, I worship you. And angels, I dispatch you in the name of Jesus. Go now to do my bidding now in the name of Jesus. They seek that word, which is the word of God. And the word, now notice this, comes to pass. I'm going to share with you something that quite interesting the Holy Spirit showed me. But let's go to Hebrews. Go back to Hebrew now. Hebrews, hallelujah, he likes to brew, hallelujah, amen. amen. <laughs> the first chapter, verses 13, the Bible says this, but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool? He never said it to any angel but Jesus, right? And, now, and then we see verses 14, he says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? And the answer is what? Yes. Now notice this, now it rolls right into chapter 2, verses 1. It rolls right in there. Therefore, meaning I'm going to continue the subject of angels. Therefore, are you there? Verses 2, chapter 2, verses 1. Therefore, wake up. Therefore, <laughs> therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest they drift away. Listen to what you're hearing right now and don't let them drift away. I said something Sunday, which I really have to clarify. 
which is so true that even Christians have let this slip, have let this drift away. They don't know about angels. They, they think that's just fairy tale. In fact, they believe more in the fairy tale tooth, or what do you call the fairy? What's that girl? What's that girl that comes around and takes the tooth? Tooth fairy. They believe more in the tooth fairy than they do angels. <laughs> they believe more in the Wizard of Oz than they do, do, do the angels. Come on, church. And, and it says here, lest, it drift, lest we drift it away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so a great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? So in other words, we can't let these things slip by. No greater salvation. We know Jesus brought us salvation, but the angels, that word salvation means they aid, they come to protect us. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, we have to mix faith with God's words. We've got to mix faith with the word of God and angels. Folks, listen, if you're having the hardest time receiving this, then believe it by faith. Say, I believe by faith. Amen. And sometimes our minds say, well, that's just too deep, Pastor. That's just, just say, I believe by faith. Because see, you can't figure out how you got saved, but you received Jesus by faith. So angels, uh, uh, you have to say it in faith and, and saying by faith what God says. Can you say amen? So I'm agreeing with the word of God. I'm going to agree with the word of God. Amen. I'm going to believe the word of God. If the word of God says there are trillions and trillions of angels and he says they're for me hey man i'm gonna receive them all hallelujah amen. amen agree with god and say it you know say with me they're commissioned by god, commissioned by god. For, me. for me angels are commissioned by god hallelujah amen. amen listen if you're a businesswoman or businessman commission your angels to go get some contracts amen. commission your angels you're believing god for a breakthrough in finances Confess and believe God for angels. Go get your money. Angels, go get my money. I need $20,000 right now. Go get it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And then what do you do? You believe that you received it according to... Well, let's go there. Let's go to Mark 11. Mark, Mark 11. Hallelujah. Amen. See, sometimes when we talk about Mark 11, we, we, we hear what Jesus is saying, but we forget about putting the work of the angels to Mark 11. So in other words, if I commission angels, then I'm going to operate in Mark 11, 23. Listen to what it says in Mark 11, 20. If I commission angels to go get me some contracts, go, go cause people to look at my website, cause people to look at our, you know, at our, at our uh, uh, stream, uh, uh, whatever it may be. Notice this, then I, 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 I support it with Mark the 11 chapter, verses 23. Are you there? That says... Uh, for uh, surely I say to whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea and doubt not in his heart, but believes those things that he says. Well, you just have to believe you dispatched angels. I dispatched my angels. Therefore, I believe those things which he says shall be done and he will have whatsoever he says. And then I add verses 24. Therefore, I say Jesus said, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So, Father, I thank you that I dispatched my angels. Thank you, Lord. My angels are already sent forth. They're, they're, they're going and bidding on my behalf. They're flying far to go do it. Uh, Lord, I thank you. My angels are gone to do it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Thank you, Lord, that I receive my money that the angels are bringing me. I thank you, Lord. I receive my motorcycle. I receive my new house. I receive, I receive my new boat. I receive my new shoes. I receive dentures. Come Whatever, whatever it may be. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you get dentures while you're believing God for some healing teeth. Amen. Hallelujah. So get an angel. Get, get an audience with angels. You know what an audience means? You're on the platform and, and they're listening to you. And you say, now angel, that angel over there, go according to the word of the Lord. Go. Go bear me up right now. This angel over here, yeah, yeah, you that, you that are excited about getting ready to go, fly in the name of Jesus. Go bring what I need for this church now in Jesus' name. Amen. They're gone. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have to do this. Now, we have to believe this. Now, I'm going to give you, there's a lot of examples that I can give you in our personal lives of angels on assignment. But there was one that I'll never forget. We were at, our, we were at a marriage retreat, and a couple, uh, the, the, the wife took off her, her ring and put it in her, 
in her little pocket in her blue jean uh, because she was going to go pick some, I don't know, some lily pads out of the pond. I don't know what it was she was going to do out of a pond. And so she put it in there. And so we decided to walk with them to the swamp, whatever it was, the little pond. And there was no path. There was just grass. It was a hill of grass. And we got to it, and we had fun out there. And all of a sudden, she reaches in her pocket, and she can't find her ring. She tells her husband, I can't find my ring. Oh, no, I can't find my ring. Now, when you hang around people of faith, you're, you're not, you don't say things like that. What does people of faith say? In the name of Jesus, I will find that ring. I will find that ring. Now, I can't find that ring. I lost my ring. So we, being people of faith, says, okay, let's just pray. Let's ask the Lord to show us. Now, notice, this is where I learned something. Not too long ago, I just learned this too. And I said, now, angels, show us where we left it. Show us where she dropped it. So we're walking back, and we're telling everybody, just keep your eyes open. And then at a distance, we saw the sun hitting something shiny, and it was the diamond ring. The sun was hitting the diamond ring. And I said, there it is. And she ran. And she said, oh, I got my ring. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice, I want to tell you something. I just, we were talking about it the other day, Pastor Christine and I, uh, and, and I was thinking about something. The Holy Spirit was part of that. The Holy Spirit put us in a path. Well, you know, when you're walking a path, well, when you're walking a grass wide path, you're not going to exactly walk where you really stepped on. So the Holy Ghost kind of put us right on the same stepping place that we walked. And the angel caused that ring to shift toward the sun. Now notice this. So that meant the Holy Ghost was part of this help and the angels were part of that help. So I learned something. Holy Spirit is there to aid you also, to direct you, to guide you. And so if, if we would have never been guided that way, then we would have missed it. Now, the angel would have had to do something else, right? But we, I truly believe the angel was on that ground and kind of made that ring shift toward the sun uh, where it perfectly aligned with the sun, and we saw it. I mean, I, you remember, we saw it so clear. I said, oh, there it is. There's a diamond. It was like from here to the front of the church. So, so we, re, we have to realize angels are on assignment for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, go with me to Genesis. Now, this is quite interesting. Genesis, uh, are you with me, church? Genesis, the 24th chapter. Get your angels. Children, get your angels to work in, in school. You lose something, say, angels, go find it. Show me where it's at. Come on, church. Genesis, the 24th chapter. Let's look at verses uh, 39. And, and we, we seem to have, when we read this, it seemed to kind of um, pass us up, but we have to read it again. Amen. Notice what it says here in Genesis 24. Um, verses 39. Are you there? Thank you, Lord, for my brand new Bible. This is, this is uh, uh, Isaac looking for a bride. Now, the way they did this in the Old Testament, or in the Bible days, and to this day, some places, some cultures do it. They're, the fathers look for their husbands, for their, for their, uh, look for a wife for their, for their sons. Amen? Now, notice this. Um, in verses 24, so we, we uh, verses, well, let's look at something here. Go with me to verse, what did I say, chapter 24, verses 39? Okay, that's it right there. But you shall go to my father's house. Abraham is speaking to his son now. But you shall go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, perhaps the woman will not follow me. Verse 40. But he said to me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angels with you and prosper you and you shall take a wife for my son from my family and from my father's house. Now, it's quite interesting. He added a, an angel that's going to find you my son's wife. Actually, Isaac was, an angel is going to show him the wife. Now, single people, why can't you pray that prayer too? Angels, go get me my Isaac. Go get, go get me my Isaac. Go get me my man of faith. 
Put me on the path of the right person. Go bring me my Sarah. Come on, Jersey. My Ruth. Abigail, come on, hallelujah, amen. amen. Go get them, hallelujah, amen. Now notice what it says, 42, 42. And this day I came to the well and said, Oh God of my master Abraham, if you will now prosper the way in which I should go. So he's actually a little nervous, all right? Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes out to draw water, I say to her, please give me a little water from your pitcher to drink. And she says to me, drink, and I'll draw, it. I'll draw from your camels also. Let there be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for, for my master's son. Now, he's really kind of going out the edge, but he's really standing in faith. He said, okay, let it be that there'll be a virgin coming. And drawing water. Well, I'm telling you, he's putting an assignment on an angel, right? Can you say amen? <laughs> amen. Verses 45. But before I finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she went down to the well and draw water. And I said to her, please let me drink. And she made haste and let her pitcher down from her shoulder and said, drink, and I'll give you your camels. Uh-oh. I'll give your camels a drink also. So I drank. And she gave the camels a drink. <laughs> then I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethel, Nathan, her son, who make a boar to him. So, so notice, this. let's just stop here. This is quite interesting. I, I love this story. It's quite interesting. Now, how did Abraham know that what he was saying would come to pass? He never saw Mark 11. He never knew about faith. But Abraham sure knew about angels. Come on. In fact, Abraham Lot, we understand Lot, was, deli was almost delivered, uh, was trying to be delivered from angels, right? And so we have to understand something. This is a generation that knew about angels. We've come a long way, haven't we? We've come a long way, and we're not even, we're, not, we're, we're barely learning now, angels. Come on, church, we come a long way. But that was, a, uh, that was a, a natural occurrence to them when God spoke, an angel came and spoke too. You see what I'm saying? And so you have to believe by faith that angels are there for you in situations like this. you got to believe by faith. Not only believe by faith, but you have to receive why the angels are there for you. Amen. Come on, church. Uh, you know, it, bid your angels. You go into a restaurant, it's packed, and it's, uh, it, you know, it's so many people. Pastor Christine have I walked into restaurants, and literally, there has been tables waiting for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Where people say, well, they must have got reservations. There's no been reservation. The only reservations we have were angels just making a reservation for us. Come on. We've had vehicle. We've had parking lots uh, waiting for us front row. We went to a restaurant Sunday, and we said, angels, now go ahead, find us a front row parking. Find us a front row parking. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. We've got to believe it. Say with me, amen. amen. Put to work what you're hearing. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to Luke now. Quickly go to, to Luke. Are you with me, church? Now, here's something quite interesting here that I'll, I'll explain to you. Go to the first chapter. We read this at the beginning of this series where uh, Elizabeth has been prophesied that she's going to have uh, John, not little John, but John, <laughs> John the Baptist, and so, but, but her husband, her husband, Zachariah, just was a, uh, just a little doubting in some sense, well, a lot of doubt, really. In, in J Luke 1, uh, 13, let's look at Luke 1, 13, the angel, but the angel said to him, uh, to Zechariah, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayers is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will be a son, bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and, may re and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Well, this is John the Baptist. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He also will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. You remember when he jumped in Elizabeth's uh, womb? And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the, to the Lord their God by Jesus Christ, right? And he will go before him in the spirit of the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom and to just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife is well advanced in years. Well, he forgot Abraham. Right? And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel. Oh man, this is, this is serious when you get Gabriel. Who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you, bringing you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not be able to speak 
Until the day, the days these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in your own eyes, in your own time. Now notice as the angel muted him, not God, the angel. The angel muted him, why? Because he did not believe the angel himself. He did not believe the angel, Gabriel. Because see, the angel Gabriel brought the word of the Lord. So understand something on, on, on hindsight when you and I say the word of the Lord, angels believe. And when angels bring us a word from the Lord, we believe. Hindsight is this. If we don't believe angels, then we will not be able to use faith. If, 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 you, if you don't believe what you're saying to angels, you're, you're in doubt. And what happens in this case, he was muted. Why was his mouth muted? Why was his tongue froze? Think about it. You know, you know the answer, right? He would have aborted the system. He would have messed up Jesus' arrival at the Jordan River. Because everything's prophesied. Everything's put in prophecy. And so listen to this. Now listen to this. As the Holy Spirit, today I was thinking about this. Listen to this. You and I can abort a great plan that it has for us if we talk doubt when angels are already in assistance for what God has for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this, you know, you know, I remember when I, when I was little, I, I was too little to remember, but my mama said that I, that's all I talked about. I, I wanted to be a preacher. I want to be a pastor. I want to be a preacher. I want to be a pastor. I want to be a preacher. I want to be a pastor. Now, it, it, I could have, uh, you know, that was a plan of God. Uh, you know, it was not something that I just thought of it. It was a plan of God. But I could have aborted that if I would have just completely backslid from that plan, completely went my own way and said, I will never serve God. I'll never go to church. I'll never be a preacher. I'll be a bar owner, a bartender. That's what I wanted to do, really, before I met Pastor Christine. Uh, <laughs> me and my best man, which is a pastor now, wanted to open up a nightclub. Uh, we, we knew some musicians. We knew music. We knew people. Hallelujah. Amen. It would have been a very, a very, very classy nightclub. We're going to make it a classy nightclub. Amen. No, don't say amen. <laughs> don't say amen. It's not good. But what happened? I got sick. Well, I, I, I met Pastor Christine. She was praying for her husband. She was praying. You know, folks, if you ask Pastor Christine what it, exactly her faith for me, she'll tell you exactly she described in prayer what I would be. She described her children in prayer. She described, you see what I'm saying? So, so we believe angels had a lot to do with this. Amen. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. Hallelujah. So we understand that God closed Zechariah's mouth because of unbelief. So we only got to speak God's words. Angels work when you and I speak of God's word. Now notice this, folks. How can we practice speaking faithful words by catching doubtful words out of your mouth? Catch them, as my pastor would say years ago, Pastor Osteen would say, negate it. I negate that word coming out of my mouth. I negate that word, causing that word to fall to the ground. The, we, we would always do that. Pastor Christina and I would always negate words. Oh, gosh, we would always negate words. I negate that word. I negate that word. I negate that word. But you see, if you don't negate that word, that, ne that word will produce after its own kind. Hallelujah. Amen. So the ministry of angels is a valid ministry. Say, it's a valid ministry. It's a very valid ministry. We're going to talk more Sunday. I can't wait till we get further into more of this, but we're just setting the groundwork. Minister, the ministry of angels is a valid ministry. It's a valid ministry. It's the truth. It stands for today. It's not an Old Testament. It's today. The ministry of angels are, are to keep you in your way, to protect you, to aid you, to, to, to give you. Uh, the Bible says to do your bidding. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. And so uh, we can tell you examples after examples, but I, I get excited when I when I hear about other people that all of a sudden miracles are happening in their walk simply by angels. Miracles are taking place. Come on, church. Amen. You see what I'm saying? How, what God does, God is good. So he's good all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this. Um, we got a, we got a uh, uh, what, what was it just a couple days ago? Uh, Yvonne, Yvonne, right? Wrote you a text and told her how um, she had found this house. Well, the Holy Spirit showed her a, a number, right? A number. And all of a sudden, she acted on it. Her husband, her and her husband, acted on it. And all of a sudden, uh, the house she saw, she ended up. I don't even know how she ended up finding this house, but it was the work of the Lord. She found this house, the same number, and, and then uh, houses are being. Uh, you know, you have to just wait, 
wait because so many people are renting houses. Right now, the housing market is just so crazy. And so uh, all of a sudden, the computer broke down. They had all the applications, <laughs> right? Computer broke down and had all the applications. So she happened to call the right number, the right person at the right time. And then she said, well, my credit uh, is not good. And, uh, you know, and so somehow the computer could not pull up credit reporting. And, and so they talked to the manager. I don't know what it was, the owner and the owner. It, it, they're, they're in it. They're in it today. Now, what you think about that? Think about that. Where was the angel? What, what assistance did the angels have during this? The Holy Spirit was there. Angels were there to mess with the computers. Angels were there to do certain things. Angel, listen, the Holy Spirit gave her a dream in her inner man. She spoke it. She spoke it to her husband, Dave. Dave, they said, call that number. The, the number was busy. They, they couldn't find it. Finally, she went directly through. She, you know, angels had a lot to do with it. Angels had a lot to do with it. And now she can say, boy, that's just, of course, she says, it just blows you, just blows you. Well, we know what she means by that, right? She's excited about it. It doesn't blow your mind, amen? It, it just, it, it, it gets you excited, hallelujah, amen. amen? And so, you know what I'm talking about? So we have to realize angels are an assist, are an assignment. And that's what we're talking about. Angels are an assignment. Say, close your eyes and say, angels are an assignment. That means you have to give them assignments. You got to give them daily assignments, daily, daily, daily. They're there for you. They're there for you daily, daily. Get, send them out for your lunch. Say, angels, go prepare a place for me for lunch. You know, we're always saying, angels, uh, we always say, Lord, what would you want us to eat today for lunch? And somehow we just get a direction. Uh, you know, all of a sudden get a direction. We always get some type of direction. But I know angels are in assistance also. They make ways. They make plans. And so a lot of times we just ignore them. So we thank God. Let's go ahead and stand up tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put our angels on assignment. Hallelujah, amen, over your home, over your night when you sleep. I, I, I dispatch angels as we sleep. Angels surround us as we sleep. Protect us as we sleep. Keep all evil out. Angels, protect my home. Every time we leave from church, come to church, uh, we say, angels, we dispatch around our house. Take care of our house. Take care of our pets. Take care of our belongings. Hallelujah, amen. Angels, we thank you. Father, we give you praise, Jesus. We worship you. We honor you for... Lord, for giving us assistance. Lord, we don't praise angels. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. You made us a little lower than God. Oh, Father, and angels are under us. They're subjected to us. We're in authority over them. And Lord, we understand that we don't do this, uh, um, we don't do it messy, Lord. We do it with purpose. We do it uh, purposely, Lord Jesus. We do it with the word, the authority of the word in Jesus' name. Father, we don't get goofy about it, Lord. Angels go fix my car. No, we don't get off into that. We don't get off into, angels go mop my house. No, we don't do that. We don't get off into that junk. We, we believe what, what they're for, to do the bidding on our behalf. They sent forth, we sent them forth to accomplish, uh, to lift us up, to, to protect us, to, to cause us to be lifted if we trip or on a stone, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you for angels. Keep us. And Father, we pray today that angels will protect us from, from this, uh, this devilish attack upon humanity. We come against that germ. We come against that, that disease. We come against that, that, that variant, that, that other thing that's trying to cross or trying to enter or, or that's already, that's here, they say. But I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Angels, we dispatch you to direct us, to lead us, to move us out of people that are infected infected to keep us clear from uh from uh, any any uh, uh, impurity of in the oxygen father we thank you for angels to protect us keep us clear father we thank you in the name of jesus and we plea of the blood of jesus upon our bodies we plead the blood of jesus we thank you for the blood the blood the cleansing blood of jesus we plead the blood we cleanse ourselves with the blood of jesus every day we thank you father and lord we thank you for tonight lord for your word and we thank you, Lord, that you're constantly doing a work in us. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus.